I'm Eric Parry. I'm the principal of the, of the firm responsible for 5 Aldermanbury Square. The site is a very interesting one. Um, I should uh, explain <coughs> that uh, actually the building which uh, you can see here, uh, the site, lies within this uh, square which is the Roman, the outline of the Roman fort. So we're, we're almost at the crossing point of the Roman fort. Um, it's an area of London that has gone through many changes, most notably um, the post-war period uh, in which London Wall was seen as a sort of brave new world of office buildings on Podia, uh, just north of which is the Great Barbican Centre and above that the Corporation's housing scheme for Golden Lane. So. Uh, this was part of some very radical thinking and indeed when you fly into London now and you can see uh, in the back from our terrace the flight path going to Heathrow, um, one of the most um, extraordinarily clear sites of urban planning is indeed the area of the Barbican and, uh, and this cluster apart from the occasional point blocks around it. So the proposition was to break in building a bigger building, break the form by stepping wings with a, with a central area that's recessed um, thereby creating more verticality in proportional terms. This is 12 and a half metres or thereabouts, as opposed to 16, and yet the width uh, is, uh, is more or less doubled to 35 metres overall. That progresses through um, a series of, of alternatives, getting to what, in my opinion, was the most elegant uh, version. Um, a, um, a version where the entasis is introduced, so this building has a 350 metre radius entasis on the, uh, on the east and the west flank uh, that just draws it between the earth and the sky. So then we get to that optimistic point and then a, a move down to the building that more or less is built, um, uh, which has two wings staggering uh, with, a, with a cut back here, which I call a belly, that cuts back to allow south light over the police station into what I'll come to describe as another very important part of the project, which is the new public space. Having, if you compare this with this, having got rid of this, uh, this non-compliant spaghetti of uh, stuff, we're able to re-establish the street here and make a new space under the building, because that is in the dialogue a very important part of the uh, of the scheme that is to say it's a, the it's engagement with the public space and creating a new completely new territory under the building but a six meter grid that develops where these uh, almost like billets of ma material are stacked one upon the other with a spandrel panel and then a baffle in the middle and then these eyebrows that so these this is a double order those are two floors they are announced by this shadow element. And the whole point of this architecture is, um, is twofold. It means that the building isn't a kind of cadaverous green of glass. It's, uh, it's got a brightness to it. Um, and very importantly, the depth of this, uh, this area of solidity that gives the body to the building um, is casting a shadow and creating protection from solar gain. So it's very much both acting as a, a glass building but a protective glass <coughs> building for that, for that, um, for that purpose. Um, these, uh, these, these illustrate the, uh, the models. Um, um, Full-size maquettes of, uh, of parts of the elevation with the tightness of the um, of the return with a back cut tested uh, as I've shown with the gauges um, to, the, to the surface um, of material and if you now um, swing round you can see just from uh, our office uh, terrace the building uh, in the distance and uh, perhaps that's, that's uh, been a great thing to be able to walk to most of these sites so uh, there's no, no global global escapades. It's very much a, a, a local project uh, to our base here in, in London.